Hello everyone and welcome. Welcome to Main Point. Thanks for coming out guys. We have a full house. I'm just going to let everyone say hello to our online audience tonight. Hello. Give them a shout. Go ahead, shout. Hey! hey. 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 Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. We welcome you. Uh, we're, we're excited tonight to have another testimony, another uh, story of one redeemed by the Lord. We're grateful for the Lord's mercy on our lives, and I know that Ali is excited to share his to his share his story and experience. And he's not nervous at all. <laughs> Come on up here, Ali. <laughs> We're, uh, we're blessed to have Ali here tonight. Let's yeah. make him feel welcome, guys. Let's give him a A little while back, uh, Frank had given me the opportunity to go up to Camp Joy, where he works, which is up in Burks, beside the prison. Uh, it's, uh, what is it? How long is it? Two years? Two-year two year men's transitional living. A two-year men's transitional living program. Yep. And uh, he gave me the opportunity to go up there and share. I got to meet... Ali and a, and a bunch of the guys up there, and it was a blessing. Uh, in return, we had we had uh, Josh. Josh come back. The director. The director of that program came and shared his testimony here, and Ali came that night. And and uh, I believe that was a special night for you, wasn't it? It was a special night. Yeah, so we're, so we're, uh, we're uh, excited to hear about that tonight. I'm not going to share about it. I'm going to let Ali share about that. You just hold this button down until the light comes on there. But before we uh, before we introduce him tonight and give him the mic, let's uh, let's go to, to the Lord in a word of prayer. All right? God, we thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so much for Ali's life and what you did. Your mercy and your goodness, God, you are so good. We are so grateful for the freedom that we have in you. Lord, there are so many testimonies in this place, so much evidence of your goodness. Lord, we're grateful that we can come together and share those experiences in our faith with between ourselves and to the world around us. So God, we pray that tonight what Ali shares would be a blessing and a testimony to that someone would would be blessed by. Lord, we just pray for Ali. Be his be the words in his mouth, Lord. We pray your peace and comforting touch over him. Be with him, Lord, as he as he prepares to share tonight and uh, guide him and comfort him. In Jesus' name, Amen. amen. All right. This is Ali, everyone. That thing, that thing. Is that light on? Yeah, it's on. There we go. It's on. Can you guys hear me? Yep. 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 Um, hi, my name is Ali. I just want to say thank you for everyone in here for allowing me to speak, um, allowing me to share. Thank you for the viewers at home for tuning in uh, to listen to my testimony. Um, I don't do this too often. Uh, it's been only one other time that I ever shared in front of a large group, you know, especially, you know, after a week like this. It's been very, very scary and uh, stressful, you know, because I didn't know what to say. You know, I'm, I'm actually kind of relying on the Holy Spirit to help me because I don't, in my experience, when I try to write a script down, it never goes the way I want it to, you know. So I'm just going to be honest. Um, uh, on how my walk with Jesus, how I found God, or I should say how he chose me, um, it was a little, it was very bumpy. Um, so just growing up, God was never, he was in my life, but he wasn't in my family. Um, he was, he was, or I should say, we didn't, we didn't believe in God. You know, I grew up, my dad, my grandfather, they always were big on reading. And always big on smarts and, and intellectual and and logic, and um, so I grew up reading and you know just thought that God just just started to make sense to be honest. So I was like, whoa, who man in the sky and all that. And then um, I get to my later teenage years and I get into some trouble. Um, I, I get into some things and and I ended up getting getting sent to rehab. A uh, big reason why I'm here is because uh, drugs and alcohol played a very big part in my uh, later teenage years that um, caused me to do things and be a part of things that, looking back now, I just wish I wasn't a part of. You know, if only I'd spared myself, but I'm actually kind of glad that it happened because it all led me here, right now. Um, and 
during that time, I, I thought I was God. You know, I was perfect at, you know, um, as someone here said earlier, as controlling my life. Especially once it, it, it was once it was out of control, you know. I just I was holding on, but it's almost like holding on to like uh, like a balloon with oil on it. You're just never gonna get a hold of it, you know. No matter how hard you try. And the funny thing is, is that I get I get sent to rehab, and um, I go through the fellowships of AA and, and NA. Um, both both really good fellowships and. Um, we have a little thing here, it's called a higher power, God of your understanding. Um, and going through the program, I, I just I was just like, all right, yeah, I believe. Because um, Camp Joy, where I'm at right now currently, it's an all men's program. They don't take, they don't take men my age. Um, I was the first one at 18 years old. I got an interview when I was 17 there because, I mean, it's God. It's God. Someone who I knew from caring outpatient knew someone from Camp Joy, and if I was never there, I would have never gotten in there. It was, it's just, it's a miracle that never really should have happened, but it did. And that's, that's odd. So I always had this concept of, yeah, there's someone who's, who's, you know, the mastermind behind the puppeteering, and I just never know, I never known who, you know. For a while, I struggled to find that, and, you know, and, and I pray. I was the biggest foxhole prayer guy, you know. Every time things would go wrong and things would happen, I just pray and hope that someone would hear me. Hope that, and that's and that was probably the only time I ever truly believed in a God was when I was foxhole praying. I was hoping there was a God. I was fishing for a God, but I didn't really know who it was um, until. Uh, Later down the road, I end up coming to, well, Floyd comes out to see us, and he shares his testimony, which was a really, really good testimony he shared at Camp Joy. And uh, yeah, I rocked the house, let's just say that. So I got the card, and um, yeah, I got the card, and uh, our camp director came up here and, and spoke, so uh, it was my first time coming up here. Beautiful drive, never been up to Africa, or Lancaster at that point. And um, I, I, was, I was just loving it. I was enjoying myself that night. Still keep in mind that, that at this point, I still don't know who God is. I still don't know who he is. I just had the, you know, and I was, I was coming to fit in, never worshipped, first time ever singing songs. I haven't been to church at this point yet. I haven't. Never stepped inside of a church. Um, so for me, it was a little bit nervous. But, I, you know, I was trying to fit in. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to sing the songs and, you know, do this. And Frank, Frank being here was a very, very big, it, it, it eased me. It eased me a lot, you know, and I'm grateful for Frank for that. He eases all of us a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he does. He does. And, and to be honest, without him being here right now, it would probably be a lot more difficult, you know. Um, so thank you for that. Love you, bro. Love you, too. Um, so I went there. I went here. And this was uh, Christmas Eve, the day before Christmas Eve, or something like that. And it was, yeah, my, my camp director came up here, and it was a really nice time. And then I remember I, I talked to Floyd, um, a couple other guys here. There we go. We're good? Yep. We're good? All right, there we go. There we go. Sorry, Sorry about that. No, no, you're good. I talked to a couple guys here, Dean, um, Joe, some other guys here. And um, I had a very, very long conversation and a very in-depth conversation about God. And it was the first time, not, not just about God, about Jesus Christ, the first time someone's ever shared the gospel with me was here. On December 23rd, the first time it's ever happened. I didn't know. I didn't even know that you guys were doing it. I, I just thought, you know, you guys were telling me who Jesus was and this and that. I didn't even realize. It didn't dawn on me until about a month into accepting Jesus Christ. That, that's when it happened. That's when I heard the gospel. And you guys were the ones who told it to me. It is. It is. And it's funny how that works. So there was one thing that, that kind of scared me from that whole interaction there. And that was, you guys asked me, it was like, if you want to be saved, because I didn't know what saved meant by that time. If you want to be saved, all you got to do is accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And I go, well, who's Jesus Christ? And you guys tell me about him. But I'm like, 
I really don't know. I know, I know God though. I know God. I believed in God at that point. I know who He was. I just didn't know who Jesus was. And I was like, you know, I mean, who? But should I? So, going home, it was it was a lot of it was a lot of thoughts. You know, I was scared. I was like, Man, who does this Jesus do? You know, and and what role does He play? And why should I? So then I fast forward. I start going to church. A little place called GT in Berks County. A really good church, nice church. Um, and then they, 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 they're, they're talking about Jesus and how they love Christ and with the worship songs. And I'm like, okay, you know, of course I, I know of Jesus Christ, but I didn't know who he was. And fast forward to March, March 9th would be the day. March 9th, I meet this guy. I'm gonna keep his anonymity, but um, it's a guy that I know who's discipling right, me right now. And um, yes, and uh, he's a very smart man, very, very, very intelligent man in the world. Um, and we're at this men's retreat. It's a, it's a little men's retreat for my fellowship that we go to. And I was having a blast. I mean, I was, I was living life up there. And then I, I, I meet this guy. And when I tell you, like, it was just, it's one little small little altercation, like, kick-started, like, the next three months, and it's still going on. And I would have never thought it. I could never planned on it. But um, uh, we're talking about some things. This is a AA fellowship, so we're talking about things, and we're, you know, going to big book stuff. And then um, it's, it's, it's Friday night. This is on the 8th. And then he was like, um, tomorrow when I wake up, you want to do some Bible study. Now, he knows I've gone to church this at this point, but I we haven't gotten too much into talking about God and talking about Christ especially. So, yeah, I was like, yeah, I'll go. You know, why not? Um, so it's about breakfast time. Um, I go over there, and he's at this big, big well, NASB Bible. It's the Bible I have now, that that one, which is, it's it's. Like it, I cherish that. I cherish that Bible. Um, and we're going through it. And he's taking me to Corinthians and all this stuff. He's when he disciples me. We do Bible study. It's it's a lot of different spots in the Bible. My first time doing it, so it was a lot. It was it was intense. But um, he told me what it what what it means to be saved. And for some odd reason. I, I just don't know how it happened. I kind of do now, but for some odd reason, at that time, I just believed. I just, there's something in me just believed. He told me who Jesus was, and he told me what he did for us. And something in me just like, man, I owe that guy a lot. I owe that guy a lot. And, and, and I thought that, you know, it was a weird feeling, because I don't, I don't, I, I'm not used to this stuff like this. I'm really not. I'm not used to when it came to God. Like I said before, it was all just it was all one dimensional. But hearing this, and then the conviction when he said it, like it was true. This was the truth. I couldn't dispute it. Some of me couldn't. Could, I just couldn't. I, I couldn't shake it. Um, even if I wanted to, even if I wanted to dispute, because there's always that little voice in me that's telling me. Oh, man, that's not true. No, no, he didn't do that. He's just, you listen to a crazy old man. Don't listen to him. Voices were telling me, were, were telling me this. But I believe there was the truth. So on March 9th of 2024, that's when I got my new, uh, I guess you'd say, birth date in Christ. Amen. And, Praise uh, God. And, uh, after that, after that, that day was amazing. That weekend was phenomenal. I was, it's, it's, it's a whole it's fellowship for guys. It was it was amazing. And after that, that's where it got crazy. I would say crazy. I'd say more or less it got hard. And that's where I really learned what it meant to be a Christian. What this actually entails. This isn't, you know, I heard some guys over here talking earlier that this isn't just a one and done. No, it's not. And it's scary on how it, it, it just doesn't work that way. <coughs> 
it's a constant. It's a, it's a you need to make time. And if you don't, you will find yourself, and I find myself in my experience, I do get separated from God. And it can happen quickly. It can happen quickly. The second one thing distracts me. And if it continues to distract me, and I know who's behind it, and I know that it's, it's, it, it makes it harder and harder to get back in there. Because when, when, when you're in, you're in. So, kick off Sunday, going to church, going to Bible studies, and I'm, I'm amped and I'm excited, and then I'm reading up on things at home, at camp, and I'm talking to, my, to, to the guy who's discipling me on the phone, and, and it's, it's amazing. And something else hits. And then my mind gets distracted, and I stop utilizing, and I stop asking, and I stop, you know, confessing to God about what's going on, and asking for that help. And that just starts off small, and then it just becomes wider and wider. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, that's been happening this week. Just started a brand new job, and it's a different job than I've ever had before. And I've been utilizing all of my, everything that I have in me for this job. The only thing I haven't was Christ. I haven't prayed. I haven't done none of that stuff. You know how that feels? You know how that feels to, for, for, for days to be empty. empty. Oh, empty. You feel angry. You feel, you feel dark. Dark and damp. You feel cold. You feel like like, and then, and then when you start to think about him, then you feel guilty, you feel shameful, and then once you feel that, it becomes, it becomes like, almost like, you know, you disappoint your father, and you don't want to walk in front of him, because you know he's going to look at you with shameful eyes, that's exactly what it feels like, and it hurts, it hurts, no, no son should have to feel like this in front of the father, but it's our, it's, it was my fault, and why I did it. I know what I had to do, and I chose not to do it. I had other things in mind. I had other goals set. You know, I was so excited about this job. It's a really nice job. It's you know, it's hard work, but it's you know, it's it's something that I was, and I put my all into it these past four days, and I was ready to give up everything for this job. To be honest, once I started working for it, and I hear all the good, and they and guys start telling me about the benefits and the overtime and oh this will happen trust me you just stay here for a while and you'll get this and I'm like yeah I'm working seven days a week because I can in that job and it's scary because I don't want to because it's already been what since Tuesday I've been working there and I don't I, 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 I just don't feel I don't feel right I feel almost I, I just feel like something was it's just a big part of me is missing they say dead on our trespasses it's almost like that. That's how I feel. I feel like I'm just when 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 I'm when I'm talking with God, when I'm walking with Christ, it's a different type of feeling. When I go throughout the day and things just happen, I'm not caring about what what just happened on the road or or what this guy just said, because none of that stuff matters to me right now. Especially when I'm when I'm in the Word, or especially when I got a verse on my mind, or especially when I'm thinking about <coughs> something more previous Bible study that's really gotten me. Or I got a question. Uh, the one thing I love to do is when I have questions and I, I, don't know the, I don't know scripture too well, so I go on Google and I search up, well, what, is the, what does the Bible say about this? Then I look it up in my own Bible to make sure it's, it's true. Um, then I write down and I talk to my guy about it and he, we, we go through it from there. And I, I, I like that because it's almost like, like, like searching and finding things. And you get get nice little cool answers, and then I got, I got the NASB, so I can't really read much of it. It's very hard to understand, um, so he does a lot of the deciphering, but um, that's the type of stuff that, that when I do that, it's, it's just a warm feeling. I don't feel hate for nobody. In the shower before I came here, I was mad at a specific somebody. I'm talking about I was, I was angry at him. You know, over something that happened, I had a big part to play in. And I'm in the shower and I'm ruminating about what I should have said to this individual. Because the way I, ha I, 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 I handled it in, and I could have handled it in a better way, I didn't handle it the way I wanted to, and that's kind of what bugged me. And I was like, oh no, I should have done better, I should have done this, I should have showed him. And, 
And that moment, I just felt like, man, like, where, where, why am I mad? Why am I so angry? I never feel like this. I never feel like this after I go to church. I never feel like this after I pray. Because that's the big one. You see, getting up in the Word, going to church, worship, all those things are stuff that, you know, you might you can do it at your house, but you go to the church, you go to see somebody else and go out and, and do things with it. You know, you get out. Um, Praying, that, that happens anywhere, any time of the day. There's no excuse why. And, it's, and, and that's, what, that's where that real guilt and shame is because I know, like, why couldn't I just at this time? None of my prayers ever last longer than maybe five, six minutes. And that's all it would have took. That's all it would have took to get me out of there. It's five, six minutes, you know? On the road, same thing. You know, at work especially, you know, that was one of the biggest things that was helping me at my last job. When I get frustrated with a boss or a coworker, I just pray. And you know what? I have a good time after that because I wouldn't be as angry as I was. And then that anger dwindles down, and then I'm just like, all right, I'm waiting to see what I'm going to do later today. What 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 next do I have? And stuff? What what else can I do? Prayer was one of the biggest things that this is one of the biggest things that helps me. And it's sad because I can't tell you today that this week has been one of those that I'm practicing it. Out of all weeks, this should have been the week. The week that I come here and I share the testimony of how I find Christ. This should have been the perfect week. I should have had scripture prepared for this. I should have had, oh, well, this happened and prayed. No, that's the complete opposite. Start Starting this week, it, it already started off a little bit wonky. And it's... it's, it's, it's I mean, start to finish, it's it's looking like it's gonna end up better. Yeah. Tomorrow I'm gonna tomorrow I'm gonna be getting baptized. Praise oh, God. Praise God. Tomorrow Amen. I'm gonna be getting baptized. Um, so this is like really nice. I mean, I'm I was scared before. Now it's a little bit comfortable. I got certain guys that I'm looking at that can be comfortable. I don't know if they picked up on that yet, but um, tomorrow. I will be getting baptized and standing here in front of you guys. Um, I just I stand. I was standing in a church has the the steps that goes up where the pastor preaches. Oh yeah, and our church is at least like a little over a hundred people. It is going to be packed in front of everybody. The kids too. They're not going to. They're not going to the the kids ministry yet. No, no, they're going to see it. Everyone's going to be there. Yeah, I was like, yeah, all right. Yeah, this is gonna be scary. That's happening tomorrow. Praise God. Thank They're you. Celebrating Thank with you. you. Praise, praise him. Praise him. Um. So I, I, I am, I'm scared, but I'm kind of like happy for it. You know, they say that that baptism is an outward expression. You know, I, I've been needing to express more to him. You know, and suppose from from what I heard, it it pleases him. It pleases him. I need to do some pleasing. I, I need to. I need to be that guy right now, cause uh, <coughs> excuse me, I haven't been. So that's something that I'm looking forward to. Um, my family will be there, which is a big one. Um, I didn't know how that play out. Like I said before, my family's not big into the church, and that's okay. I wasn't either. I wasn't. It's funny how things work because they're coming now, and that's um, <clears throat> that's that that really is a blessing. Breaking it down to my dad was a hard one. You know, I I sat last Sunday, Mother's Day, anxious, stressing about the conversation. I didn't even have it. I I I I I looked for the first chance. I spent time with my mom and my and my nephew, and then. I had to get back home. Um, and I came back home, and then that's when I called. And it went the total opposite way that I thought it'd be. You know, it went it went relatively smooth. And that's just funny how that works, you know. Because my biggest hope, and the, the thing that I want more than anything, is to see my family get saved. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. What I would do to have that. Seriously, I mean, I, I sit in my Bible studies with the guy who's discipling me, and he, he goes 
and and it's not we 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 don't get into the you know it it we it gets nitty gritty deep and the reality of the situations about how the highway is the road is wide but the gate is narrow and that a lot few people will make it and that hurts when I hear it. I was teary eyed the one day because I just thought about everyone I loved and I was like. And then I, he tells me all this, the other stuff about the false teachings and stuff like that. And I'm like, man, this is a lot. And, and I just want nothing more for my family to be a part of it, you know? Amen. It's, that's all I want. And, and I hope that all of us can have that. For the ones that, that aren't saved, can find that salvation. And the best hope is that we can be one of them. That's, right. I, that, that's the hope is that if, if not me, somebody else will touch their hearts. Exactly. And share the word of God with them. Share the gospel because, like, I, I, I very much appreciate it, you know? But I know that, that he works in very mysterious ways. I can't fathom it. And I don't... So good. Yeah. I don't... I, 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 before I tried to think about all the ways and how could he do this, I stopped because I was like, man, this is like... I'm just hurting my brain right now. I just need to relax. And... and it's um, it's just so beautiful, you know. Our first time coming up here, you guys were singing in worship, and I was like, whoa. First time, first time as a man that I ever sang. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I was never in the, in the singing as a kid. So coming in here and seeing all you guys sing, I was like, wow. We're singing about the Lord. It was really love for me. They must really no, I'm good, thank you. They must really love him. Yes, yes. And and this coming here the first time was it was it was a little taste of what it like what it would be to and and going to church. And in going to church I found a little community. A little uh how would I say people who I feel safe with. Safe with in different ways and I feel safe with my A guys. These are guys that I can just bust out a conversation. It's guys like Frank, there's not many of us at, at Camp Joy who, who are like Frank. Not many of them are like Frank. Not many people I can, so having Frank over there, I'm, I'm just mad I didn't utilize him earlier, but having him at a place like that, mm -hmm. it definitely helps for when I just, I, I, I just wanna talk. I wanna talk about God. Sometimes I just do, and there's not too many people I can talk with these days about it. So just having someone, it definitely helps. Absolutely. It definitely helps, you know. And I'm new. I'm new to all this. I am new. And I just, I'm, I'm just trying to get a grip. I'm trying to work on, on I, I, I just want to, to work towards being a mature Christian. Amen. You know, someone who... <coughs> has responsibilities, has spiritual gifts, and is helping others, is of the church, you know? And these were all things I wasn't thinking about when I was thinking about my job and, oh, I'm gonna be done seven days, you know, whole month, all this stuff. I'm serious, I wasn't thinking about it. I was already thinking three months in advance, oh, I'd have all my God. That's, 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 the, that's the first place that my brain went. <clears throat> Not thinking about three months, I could be helping out my church. I should be helping out my church. The re the whole reason I got a job like this is so I can, you know, I wanted to get off early. I wanted to have more time, more time off, which should happen. It's got, it should happen, but I can always change that um, so I can be involved more in these things. And that's just where my brain goes, you know? And and I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to stick with it, you know? Places like these, just seeing all you guys, the hope you get, sharing the word, praying for me. I'm thankful for each and every one of you guys because this is, this is, this. At, at first, this wasn't easy. This wasn't easy. When I pulled up in here, I seen Joe, and I was like, ah. And I was like, and I was we like, all do that. I, I, I said, said you. <laughs> we all do it. <laughs> I was thinking about, I was thinking, thinking about him, the hardest illegal U-turn, and just. Let's go back home. I'm tired. I want to eat something. I want to do something else. But no, I was like scared. And he 
each and every one of you guys came up and comforted me. Made this a whole lot easier. A whole lot easier. We love you, brother. Yeah. And I love you guys, too. You know? This is a really cool place, you know? It's a, it's a safe place. Yeah. You know? Right. This and, is the house that the Lord made. This is. Amen. This is. With all his children in here. Look at that. Look at that. That's, that's pretty neat. And, and we got a really good bunch of them, too. Yeah, we got the nice kid. But, um, yeah, I just want to tell you guys I'm grateful to be up here. I was, uh, when he asked me to do this last week, I was, first thing I thought about was like, oh, so what's the first excuse? Should I tell him, should I tell him work? <laughs> Starting a new job, tell him, oh, yeah, yeah I'm working, I'm working Saturday night, you know, first shift. I'm just going to let him go with that one. I was, I was like, and I was like, you know what? One thing I've always learned from other fellowships is that if you're asked to do something, if you're asked to speak to it, I was like, all right, I'm gonna do it. And did everyone take note? <laughs> <laughs> say, say it again for the people. Say yes. Yeah, say it again for them. <laughs> if you ask to share, you ask to speak. Just do it. Just do it. You know, it's um. Yeah. Just, just do it. Because Jesus, Jesus did it. Jesus did Jesus it. Did it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. trust me, I was, yeah, I was, I was so, so ready to not do this, and I'm glad that I did. You know? We are too. Yeah. So with that, I don't have much. I'm sorry, I don't have much to to add on to that. Just want to say I'm thankful for the viewers at home. I'm thankful for each and every one of you here who helped me, supported me, and welcomed me in here. And each and every one of you guys have, have made it a lot easier and, and has given me hope for the night, you know? Amen. Thank you. Praise Jesus. Bless him so you you mentioned the other fellowships right oh, so you're, you're obviously yeah. in recovery yeah so since you've accepted christ as your lord and savior what does your recovery look like how does how does christ in your life now recovery yeah, is so in my, recovery. In, in my fellowships i'm i'm looking and gearing myself towards people who are also in recovery and and who are believers in christ now within both fellowships it's not that common that's where, I'm not going to get into all the other stuff, but that's where, there's other things that are accepted, but God isn't as, as often as I'd like. Now, there is guys. The guys who's discipling me is from my AA fellowship, but he is, he's, he's honestly, he's more about the church, and he's more about Christ than he is. So having a guy like that makes it, so when I go to these fellowships, because, you know, these are my fellowships, these are the guys that when I'm going through things, I can talk to, and who can relate with certain aspects of my recovery. Um, nine times out of ten, it's going to be the guy who's discipling me because hey, he's in recovery too, and he's 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 all about Jesus Christ, and he's very very. There's not one thing that I just ask him. He's like, oh, we'll flip to this, and we'll get into it. And then I'm writing all these things. My hand hurts, and just like yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. To answer your question, um, I I still. I'm still in with the, I guess you can say the AA crowd, but the AA crowd that I'm we're more geared to, you know, we're more Christians. More. So my question is more not not about the fellowships, but what has Christ done for your recovery? So well, now, now, Christ, that, now that you have Jesus in your life uh, and your recovery, yeah, what does that look like? Not, yeah. not the fellowships or the people. Yeah, so having Christ. Christ in my recovery right now, it makes it a... I wouldn't say easier, but now it's like I can put a face and I can put faith to that name that I was searching for. You know, when I said God or a higher power, you know, those foxhole prayers and just, mm, let me get out, please, just help me out. Now it's different. When things go down and I'm feeling, you know, I get cravings, or when other stuff are going down, where I'm like, man, and I'm not saying that because cause it, it's, this is all, it's a two-way streak. He plays his part, and he does it well. I, I, I have faith in him. He's never going to not do it. And if, there's, it's always for a reason. So if it doesn't go my way, my way, then the nine times out of ten it wasn't meant to. It's my responsibility to call upon him, pray, and ask him for when those times come. But when they come, and I do do it, it's just it's, it's beautiful how it works, because nine times out of ten, whatever I thought about doing, that would have been negative or what if anything else, it's not happening. 
It's just not. It's just, it doesn't work that way. And it's hard to try to do these things. It's hard to try to put yourself in a space where you're like, yeah, I'm still going to do it anyway, even though I prayed. Because you just can't after it. It's not in you. Because he's with you. And, and doing this and, and praying. When I pray, it helps my recovery out more than talking to the guys in the fellowship because I, that, the relationship I feel, I'm not saying theirs isn't real, but this one's real. And this one's helping me from making those bad decisions right. now. That's right. There we go. Right now. Amen. Yeah. Do you accepted Christ on March 9th? March 9th. I as well accepted Christ on March 9th. On March 9th? Look at that. Look at that. Birthday twins. 2023, look at that. At main point. Banquet. Yeah. Best place to do it. <laughs> Best place to do it. Twins in Christ. Yeah. Twins in Christ. That's amazing. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. Hey, I want to encourage you. This this is like you said you want to be a mature Christian. This is a journey. I mean it it is it just that you're always learning, but the the love that's in you is what you're aching for your family. Like you want them to experience the love that you're feeling. Like, that's cool. That's, that's, that's you. That's Jesus in you. That's that right. You want yes. your family to have. That's, yeah. that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And like Motel 6. Yeah. Leave, the, leave the light on for us. I'm not sure what Motel 6 is. I'm going to Google the light at home. But hey, you, you said about you want to tell your family, you are that testimony. You're a living testimony. They see that in you, and that's going to that's gonna be that light left on for them. Yeah. <laughs> you'll, yeah. you'll figure it out when you Google it. That's the hope. I can only go by action. Only yeah. by action. So I have... So what I was told as a Christian, I'm never going to be perfect, but I have to be better. I have to try to be not better in the sense of better than everyone else, but I have to put more of an effort to try to become better people, to help the next person. That's what I was told as a Christian from the yeah. guy who's disciple. And sometimes it's very hard because we're people, we're sinners by nature. We are, we're, we're naturally meant to rebel against God. So it's extremely difficult for us to do so. But when we do and the other guys watch, I have faith that they're gonna see, well, something's up. Because if you ask my family how I was two and a half years ago, when I go back further, when I was really bad three years ago, they're going to tell you, oh, he didn't care about nobody. Because at that time, I really did. You know? I want to change that. I want to change that. I want people to see what Christ really does. What his works does. Just, just spend time with Jesus, and you'll, you'll start doing the things he does. Mm -hmm. You don't have to try hard at anything. If you hang out with someone... You're the only one that's not speaking like they are. Like you're soon going to be speaking like they are without realizing you're doing it. Does that make sense? Yeah. If you go down south, you're soon going to be talking with a with a twang. <laughs> Whatever. Twang. Without trying, you're going to come back a week later. And people are going to say, "Why? Why are you speaking like that?" And it's not like you tried to learn it. You just gonna, you're going to pick it up. Yeah, so it's not about like how hard can I try, but how much time can I spend with with Christ and getting to know Him and getting to love Him, and you'll just start. Sometimes we forget we can't. Yeah. That's good, Dave. 
Is Dave getting wiser the longer that beard gets? Is it like Samson? I think so. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt, that's for sure. Right. Dave had deep. That's right. Thank you, Dave. Amen. Don't, don't learn to know me. <laughs> I think this is a good time, too, to, to encourage you to get plugged in. Uh, the journey begins now. Upon the confession of your faith, that's where the journey begins. That's where the road gets difficult. But be encouraged to, to plug in to uh, like-minded believers, to get numbers, get plugged in with a bunch of guys. How many, how many guys would be willing to support and take a phone call from Ali? Absolutely. How many guys? Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Know, know that you're loved and supported. That's just what it's all about. That's what discipleship is. And you don't have to do and in, yourself. And in, and in you reaching out to someone, you're going to encourage that person, and they're going to be strengthened. Mm -hmm. So it's a two-way street. That's the beauty of it. So be encouraged to uh, to get plugged in as much as possible and know that it's going to be difficult, and it's okay. It's okay. I was uh, I caught a word tonight, you know, about... Uh, would you just explain that, that word you gave me? That was so good, about the heartbeat. Oh, uh... <laughs> Y'all, when your heart beats, there's a time in between when it stops. It has to, because during that time when it stops, it's filling up with the new lifeblood, so that it has something to pour out. If you don't take time to rest, if you don't take time to back up and take care of yourself, you wind up like a heart that's trying to beat too fast. And a heart that beats too fast winds up becoming a heart that goes into congestive heart failure. If it continues, you die. There has to be a time when you take time and set yourself apart from the activities, the stuff, so that you can spend time just with you and God. That's how you refresh yourself. When you do that, then you open yourself up to be able to be filled with him, then you can overflow into somebody else. That was the word that he shared with me earlier, and one that I needed to hear, but I'm sorry for putting you on the spot, but that I feel like that's one we could all we, we all need to hear. Like that uh, I, I was encouraged by that, so I thank you for that. That's great. Anyone else? Back to you, Ali Noah. Let's let's give Ali a round of applause. So good. I I was blessed. So blessed. There's two two scriptures that jumped into my mind as Ali was sharing. Many of us here, probably most of us here, were blessed and gifted with the opportunity to be raised in some sort of form of faith, right? How many didn't how many here were not raised with any teaching, any biblical teaching? I see two hands. That's 35 people, three hands. 34 people that were blessed and gifted with the opportunity to have the gospel as a child. How amazing is that? How incredible is that, right? But to the three of you who didn't raise your hand, be encouraged because my Bible tells me that if I can find it, Probably should have had this ready to go before him. This is, this is the story of uh, Jesus and Thomas. It says, Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. Uh, that was when he appeared to them in the upper room. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see his hands and the marks of his nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. And I think about what he did. He, he, he gave you that opportunity to, to witness him. He said, Put your finger here and see, and see my, my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. That's what Ali did. He said, my Lord and my God, when he came to that understanding of who Jesus was, and Jesus said to him, these are his words, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Amen. 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 Blessed. 
Hallelujah. Take that. Receive that. Walk a blessed life in Christ. Right. Even when it gets difficult, right? The other thing I thought about was, was uh, in your, on your journey, you were doing the AA meetings and in the fellowship of the AA and NA, uh, the rooms, and uh, you heard, you, you knew there needed to be a higher power. And you came to a believing that there was a God, although you didn't fully understand, right? This is, again, Jesus' words. He says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Right? In my Father's house there are many rooms. If, if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to place, prepare, prepare a place for you? He knows you. He has a place prepared for you. Right? Yes. I will come again and I will take you to myself. He's coming again. You live for him now. And it says upon our confession of faith and confessing that he is Jesus, Savior and Lord of our lives, that we will be saved. So no matter how deep the waters get sometimes, know that they're not deep enough to take us under because we have Jesus, the lifesaver of our lives. Right? I'm, I'm very encouraged by your willingness to share and uh, you did a very, very good job. I yeah. believe that. I hope that many out there how many, how many people might be out there that, that have a similar uh, story as Ali's that, that may not, they may, they may trust in God, but they might not grasp the whole concept of who Jesus is. Be encouraged tonight. You see, you see the evidence of his faith and his confession of Christ being his Savior. You see the evidence of that. that there's, a, there's, a, there's a glow now that only Christ could do. Right? And your family will see that. Right. And that will be a testimony to them. Uh, my, I share the same feelings with my sons. So we're on this journey together now. Let's go. Let's be a light. Let's keep living for Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Uh, anybody else have anything for Ali before we close, close out the live? Yeah, Ali, your testimony uh, came to me pretty good. I really kind of enjoyed your story. I'm 20 weeks clean, so it kind of... Kind of feels the same way. You're out of love. Yeah. So, kind of, how do you feel now that you're a person of a believer now? To be honest, it feels good, but it's hard. It's I've hard. got my struggles too. You yeah. ain't the only one that's got struggles. Yeah. I wouldn't have it any other way, though. Amen. He asked you how you feel. As a believer, and, and you had said this earlier about being dead in our trespasses, and, and it reminded me of this. Um, and you were dead in trespasses and sin in which you once walked, <coughs> following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air and the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of them. But God. But God. But God. But God. Right? What's our next shirt going to say? But God. But God. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses. What did he do? How do you feel tonight? He made us alive. Once dead, we were, we were now alive. In Christ Jesus. That should be our next shirt. There you go. Made alive. <laughs> By grace. There's, through faith. We were saved. Yeah. So you were saying, like, you know, the couple days that you weren't praying and close, like you felt, you felt like uh, you couldn't walk by your dad. Yeah. So there's no condemnation in Christ. You don't have to mm. feel that way. God the Father doesn't look at us like our human fathers where there's shame right. or condemnation. Just so you know, you don't ever have to feel like that. When you do, that feeling is not from God. It's not a true feeling. You can always go to the Father. Mm -hmm. Even when you haven't seen Him, that shame and condemnation is not, there's no There's no condemnation in Christ well, Jesus. Well, the prodigal son tells us that when the son had walked away and he was feeling shame and guilt, he had lost everything he had. When he turned back to the Father and started coming back, it says the Father ran to meet him. Don't ever forget that. When you go back, he, is, he will run to meet you. Yeah, it's not only that he doesn't right. think of, in terms of shame, 
He wants you to come to him in the midst of your struggle. It was it's Romans eight one. There is there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So when you feel that, just remind yourself that it's not true. Okay. Thank you. Amen. Anyone else? All right, guys. Let's say good night to everyone online. Please do. That's right. Please do share this video so that there's others. There might be others out there like Ali that that need to hear this strength and hope. Uh, please do share this, and we welcome you back next week. We welcome you back next week at eight o'clock. Scott Jackson is going to be bringing us a message, and uh, we are we are. Excited to have him and uh, excited to come back together again. We have Cornerstone uh, Mennonite Church bringing us a meal. And uh, I'm sure that'll be good tonight, too. We thank you, Jr. and Lori, for the meal tonight. And then there, then there was those desserts. How many want to say thank you to Dawn? Thank you, Dawn. Uh, thank you, Dawn. Right I didn't make them. No, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. You, go ahead. you can say her again. Now. I made them. Oh. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Mom. There we go. <laughs> I'm wondering. I'm still wondering about the other cookies, though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're before we close Frank, this down, we're on Facebook. Oh, right? I mean, never mind. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll discuss it. Yeah, time out. We're done. All right. Don't mean enough. We look forward to seeing you all again next week. God bless you all. Have a great week. Take care. Thank you. So you have an NLT.